In March of 2018, Putin announced a series of new strategic superweapons that were claimed to be invincible. Nuclear-powered cruise missiles with unlimited range, super-heavy ICBMs that can carry over a dozen warheads, lasers, hypersonic missiles, and a weapon called Status-6. Status-6, now known as Poseidon, is Russia's intercontinental nuclear-powered nuclear-armed torpedo. That's right, it's propelled by a nuclear reactor and is armed with a thermonuclear warhead with a strength of up to 100 megatons, twice the strength of the largest nuclear weapon ever tested. Poseidon, as well as the other weapons announced, are designed for one purpose, to get around US defenses. So, can it be stopped? But first, this video sponsor, NordVPN. When you leave your house or when you go to bed, you make sure the doors are locked. You wanna make sure your physical protection and privacy are safe. But so many people forget to do that when it comes to the internet. Most likely because you can't see it. But your online life is always at risk. It really is. Using a VPN is extremely important to help protect yourself. NordVPN uses double data encryption to help keep you safe, especially when using public Wi-Fi. They have over 5,200 servers in 59 different countries. They do not log your data. Peer-to-peer -peer sharing is allowed and much more. All of which helped it earn the best VPN award for 2020 and is constantly being recommended by leading technology experts. Go check them out with the link in the description and get protected before it is too late. With the link, you'll get 68% off, only $3.71 per month. Plus, you'll get an additional month for free. On top of that, they have their 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, cancel it. That is nordvpn.org slash covercabal, or just use a coupon code covercabal. The Poseidon weapon is one of Russia's newest nuclear weapons. It, along with the others announced by Putin, are almost certainly designed with the goal of getting around U.S. defense systems. When the U.S. pulled out of the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty in 2002, Russia likely became concerned that their missiles would soon be useless, leaving them with no reliable form of nuclear deterrence. They were well aware of the U.S. SDI program in the 1980s, better known as Star Wars, and were probably worried that a new ABM system would be similar. So, they needed to come up with new forms of weapons, and Poseidon is exactly that. The weapon is basically a massive torpedo, some 24 meters long and 2 meters in diameter, and powered by a nuclear reactor, giving it pretty much unlimited range. It will be launched, at first, by the K-329 Belgorod, one of the massive Oscar II-class submarines. It's planned to be carried by other boats as well in the future, but its massive size makes it difficult to be carried and launched. They will have to build dedicated submarines just for this purpose, or heavily modify others for this task. This means they'll either be spending a lot more money on building new subs for this role, or they'll have less submarines dedicated to other purposes, all while at the same time building, operating, and maintaining their ballistic missile submarines. Either way, it's going to cost them a lot more to operate this thing. The biggest advantage of Poseidon is its nuclear reactor. This gives it the ability to reach any target in the ocean or on the coast. It's been referred to, at times, as a tsunami bomb, as detonating a 100 megaton warhead in the ocean will undoubtedly cause widespread damage over a large area. There's a lot of debate about the exact effects, but it will cause some severe damage. It could be used to take out entire surface groups, like a US carrier strike group, or swim up to a coastal city. The size of its warhead means it can be detonated pretty far away from the target and still destroy it, making it even more difficult to try to stop. So how could you? First, before you can stop it, you have to find it. And this really comes down to how difficult it will be to detect. Underwater, what matters is sound. The louder it is, the easier it is to detect and track. Nuclear-powered submarines are typically louder than conventional-powered ones due to the reactor and cooling systems needed. And again, Poseidon is nuclear-powered. Another factor is the speed it will travel at. Generally, the faster it travels, the louder it is. Also, at what depth? The more shallow it is, typically it becomes easier to detect. These are more things we just don't know, but since it doesn't have a crew, and therefore doesn't require a pressurized section, it can likely operate at much deeper depths than manned submarines. So I think it's safe to assume it will travel to the target real deep, and at a slow speed to minimize the chance it is detected. There are rumors that Poseidon is super cavitating, traveling at several hundred knots or kilometers per hour, but this is almost certainly not true. Images released show it's the wrong shape. Supercavitating vessels, like Skaval, have a very distinct shape which enables it to move through the water so fast, like the difference between a typical airliner and a supersonic one. Supercavitating vessels also have a special nose cone which pierces through the bubble that it travels in, again which can be seen on Skaval. Poseidon does not have this. 
so there are many factors that will come into play when it comes to detecting Poseidon. But the range at which you can detect a modern submarine is pretty short. Maybe 20, maybe 50 kilometers at the very most. Maybe Poseidon is louder than current subs, so maybe you can say 100 kilometers. But even this is very tiny compared to the size of the ocean. It will be really difficult to find. But then, once it gets close to the target, be it a port or surface group, it could swim up to a more shallow depth and also speed up significantly to reduce the time that the target has to react before impact. Video Russia released does show something like this. At this point, it would be much easier to detect, but then of course, by then, it might be too late. The US Navy has a very advanced underwater sound monitoring network called the Integrated Undersea Surveillance System. It's an upgrade from the famous SOSUS, which was used to detect Soviet submarines during the Cold War. Again, detecting it would be very difficult, but not impossible. If they can find it, a defense could be broken down into three parts. Destroying the submarine before it fires it, destroying it while it's transiting, deeper and possibly slower, or destroying it while it's in its terminal phase, when it's more shallow, but then again possibly faster. Destroying the submarine carrying Poseidon is the best option, similar to how the US submarines today try to trail Russian ballistic missile submarines in hopes they will be able to sink them before they have a chance to launch their missiles. But if that doesn't work, you'll have to deal with destroying Poseidon itself. The US really doesn't have much in their arsenal right now to stop it. Most torpedoes, like the Mark 48, and sea mines can only go so deep. So again, it would depend on how deep Poseidon can travel. The ocean near the coast tends to be much more shallow, called the Continental Shelf, which can extend off the coast for 100 or more kilometers. So for example, most of the Atlantic Ocean might be between 3 and 5,000 meters deep, but the Continental Shelf off the coast of New York is at most 100 meters deep. This would give the US, in this case, a better chance of not only detecting it, but stopping it. Poseidon's speed, again, is unknown, but I think a safe guess is that it's comparable to a standard heavyweight torpedo, 50 to 60 knots. So, if you want to stop it, you're probably going to have to get in front of it, as its speed would make it impossible to catch up to. You can fly ASW aircraft out in front of it and drop mines or torpedoes, which can hopefully turn around and run into it. These are some options that are already in service, but the situation would have to be perfect to hit it. Other options for the future include things like anti-torpedo torpedoes. The US has been working on these things for a while now to defend ships against normal torpedoes. Things like ATTDS, CRAW, etc. But these are likely to have pretty limited range, and unlike a normal torpedo, which has to get right up to a ship to destroy it, Poseidon's large warhead allows it to be able to detonate at a distance. Some other more future weapons that people like Sutton have talked about would be UUV swarms, mobile sea mines, even missiles that can fly out into an area then drop into the water. Similar weapons already exist, like ASRock, but these would need to be much larger, fly further, and carry either a more powerful torpedo or ones with a larger warhead to take out Poseidon. They might even need to be armed with nuclear weapons themselves to make sure it destroys it, similar to how early ABM systems were armed with nuclear warheads. These would need to have a long enough range to get out there and destroy Poseidon at a far enough distance due to, again, the size of Poseidon's warhead. But depending on how Poseidon is used, you might not have to be able to stop it at all. It seems likely to be a strategic weapon, the same as ICBMs, used as a deterrent. Just as the US has no ability to destroy Russia's hundreds of ICBMs which would be fired at it, it doesn't need to have the ability to destroy Poseidon. It's simply another weapon used to scare the US from attacking Russia, like any other nuclear weapon. There is some question as to whether this thing will even work. We know Russia has had many problems with their nuclear-powered cruise missile, Skyfall. These weapons are state-of-the-art and require extreme engineering and technological capabilities to work. They need to develop a reliable, small nuclear reactor also a form of guidance like no other in history. It's questionable how Poseidon would even be able to navigate to its target. A coastal city or non-moving target would be easier, as it can operate on inertial navigation as well as high-frequency sonar to avoid crashing into the seafloor. But finding a moving target, like a carrier strike group, would be nearly impossible. Radio doesn't work well underwater, and not at all at such depths. How will it be able to find them? Any coordinates given before launching would be old and the ships could have moved a great distance in the time it takes Poseidon to get there. Any onboard sonar it has, like most torpedoes do, would have a short range, maybe again 50, maybe 100 kilometers. So it might have to come up to the surface or have a floating wire deployed occasionally to receive updates from satellite. So there are a lot of issues that would need to be sorted out. Then also, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, it was likely designed due to the fears of an all-encompassing ABM system. But that never happened. 
So the question becomes just how much money does Russia want to pour into Poseidon when the whole thing is unnecessary? There is really no strategic need for Poseidon right now, or likely anytime soon. So it is possible this thing will never fully work, but it doesn't have to. The threat it poses alone is enough to deter a potential enemy, and that's all it needs to be. And finally, before we end, I'm sure you already know of him if you watch my channel, but Binkoff's Battleground channel is one I've been watching since before I even started my channel. Our videos are similar, but I tend to focus on more specific topics or scenarios, where he tends to focus more on the grand scale, something that would require a lot more research. But I think both complement each other pretty well. He has a video coming out on 6th gen aircraft anytime now, probably by the time you watch this. And I still want to see him make that video on 1980s US military versus current military, the one I mentioned in my last video. Maybe we can all convince him to make that. Anyway, check out his channel if you haven't, or even if you have before, he always has good and unique videos coming out.